Hi, I'm Malcolm McGrath, and in this video I'm going to talk about teamwork. I kind of don't like the word team because it's overused. You know, whenever I get people applying for jobs, I get resumes and everyone says team player. But then a lot of the guys who say they're a team player, they don't show up for work on time. So clearly they don't understand what being a team player is. So in this video, I'm going to talk about really what a team is and the basic requirements for having a team function. A team is a group of people that get together to accomplish a goal. A sports team, you know, a football team or a hockey team, their goal is to win games. A band or an orchestra, their goal is to play a concert. A construction company, their goal is to build a building. Or an infantry squad, for example, they're a team and their goal is to attack an objective. Not all groups of people are teams. There are different types of groups of people. A classroom, for example, is not a team. Even a class on construction, you're not building a building. You're just talking about building a building. So there's no goal other than showing up for class. Or, you know, say, a social group, a party, or a, you know, a fishing weekend with a bunch of guys. That's not a team either. You can behave like a team. You can divide up you know, who loads the bar fridge or whatever. But the only goal is to show up and have fun. They're not accomplishing anything other than just showing up. Now, teams can be friendly, but a team is not the same as a group of friends. And a lot of teams are not friendly. There are you know, lots of stories of rock bands or successful uh, musical groups where they hate each other. But they're still a very effective team, and they play good concerts and do good music. So a friendly team is the nicest kind of team, but a team doesn't need to be friends. So there are a few basic requirements for teams to function as teams, for a group to accomplish a goal. The most basic one is showing up. If you're on a hockey team, you have to show up for the game. If you're the goalie, you gotta show up for the game. And you gotta show up with your pads and your skates and your stick and your equipment ready. And you have to show up on time, you know, that you can get ready before the game starts. And not only that, you have to show up for practices. And the same thing, show up on time with your equipment. If you don't show up, if you're the goalie, you're letting the other team members down. It's not just that, you know, you're missing out. It's like everybody's missing out. And, you know, the same applies to a band or a musical group. If you're the drummer, you have to show up. And you show up with your instruments and you show up with your music and you make sure your instruments are tuned and ready to go, and you show up in enough time that you know, you're not wasting other people's time at the start of the practice or at the start of the concert or whatever. And the same applies to all kinds of teams. And in a cabinet shop, the same thing. You have to show up and show up on time, show up ready to go, and show up with your safety gear and your basic tool belt and your work clothes and be ready to go. A friend of mine was in a film crew and their expression was, if you're 15 minutes early, you're already late. The point being, in a film crew, which is another type of team, you want to be there early enough that when the shoot starts, you're already ready to go. Take a few minutes, get yourself organized, so when the team starts whatever it is they're gonna do, they're all ready to go. And, you know, that's one of the differences between other types of groups of people. If you're a classroom, for example, it's not all that important if you show up. If you skip class, the teacher still gets paid. The other students can still listen to the lecture. Uh, you're not letting anybody down. Maybe you're letting yourself down, but it's not a team. There's no goal other than attending class. So if you miss class, if you show up late, you may irritate people but you're not disrupting all the other students in the class. And the same with a party. If you show up late for a party or you can't make it, nobody really cares. People will have fun and a social group can just continue on without you. But a team, if you don't show up and you're not ready, you're letting the other team members down. Another fundamental requirement of a team is to play your position. If you're a goalie in a hockey game, you have to stay in the net. You can't just skate around the ice. You can't Say, oh, you know, I saw an opening, so I skated down the ice with the puck and thought I'd score myself. No, if you're a goalie, you stay in the net. If you're a defenseman, you stay back. If you're a forward, you play forward. You have to play your position. Now, that position can change depending on the circumstances, but it's crucial that you play that position. The same if you're in an orchestra or a band, if you're a drummer, you have to play the rhythm for the song that the rest of the band is playing. You can't just sort of, you know, start improvising on your own without coordinating that with the other team members. In a team, playing your position is absolutely crucial. You know, once again, it's not like in a 
a social environment where you can just mingle. You know, even though, let's say you have a fishing weekend, you know, maybe you're supposed to barbecue the hamburgers, but you get drunk and you forget and your buddy barbecues and nobody suffers. Everybody's okay. And sometimes even on like those fishing weekends, when things screw up is when people have the most fun. Oh, well, he fell asleep and barfed in the whatever. And it's a big laugh. So it really doesn't matter. But if you're in a team and you have a specific function, you have to do that. And finally about teams, most teams to be effective have a leader. The job of the team leader is to direct the other members of the team to whatever the goal is. Doesn't mean he's the best or he's the most important or she is smarter. It means their job is to direct the other members of the team towards the goal. If you are, for example, the coach on a hockey team, you know, you're the leader. If you're the quarterback on a football team, you call the play and your job is to sort of oversee where the other players are going and direct them into various positions. You know, in order to do your job, you can't be looking ahead two steps. So the role of the leader is to look ahead and direct the other members of the team towards the goal. And most effective teams have some kind of a leader. So an orchestra has a conductor, you know, an American football team, the quarterback is sort of the leader on the field. An infantry squad has a sergeant, a construction crew has a foreman. And, you know, in my little business, I am the team leader. And, you know, I tell people, okay, you do this, you do that. And for the team to function, it is crucial that you follow the instructions of the leader. If you're an American football team and, you know, the quarterback says go long in the huddle and you go short, the whole play falls apart. The whole team is let down if you don't clearly follow the instructions of the leader. And the same in my little cabinet shop. If I say, you know, you got to get these doors sanded, that's important because I'm thinking, okay, we need to sand those doors. We need a couple of coats. They've got to be installed in a couple of days. They're going to need drying time. And we have to do a whole bunch of other things in the interim. So it's really important that those doors all get sanded, you know, this morning. Because I'm thinking already three or four steps ahead what needs to be done and what we need to do for the rest of the week. It's crucial if I say get these doors sanded this morning that you do sand them. That You don't just wander off and say, well, I thought I'd do something else. And, and then I wanted to, I don't know, clean up this. And then I wanted to fix this other thing. It's like, no, I'm giving you the instructions because I'm thinking three steps ahead. And if you don't do them, then things start to fall apart. Then you're letting down the other members of the team. Those are the three basic requirements of a team that if you don't follow them, you can't really be on the team. You have to show up ready to go, on time with whatever your equipment is. You have to play your position. So if you're you know, the goalie, you stay in net. If you're the drummer, you play the rhythm. And you have to follow the instructions of the leader. If you're in an orchestra, you, know, you have to start and stop when the conductor waves his wand or else the whole orchestra falls apart. And, you know, if you can't do those things, even if maybe you're a good musician or a good hockey player, you can't be on the team because the team can't function if you don't meet those basic requirements. And the same with the cabinet shop.